Good day everyone, so I am Gian Nguyen Dina and together with me is Ms. Sarah Del Castillo and we're going to discuss today uh, newborn complications specifically on congenital talipes echinovirus or clubfoot and hypospadias and epispadias. Okay, next slide please. So what is uh, TEV or congenital talipes equinovirus or club foot? So congenital talipes equinovirus is a common foot abnormality in which the foot points downward and inward. The condition is present at birth and involves the foot and lower leg. And it occurs twice as often in males than in females. It may affect one or both feet. 50% uh, are bilateral. For parents with no family medical history of club foot and no other children with club foot, the chance of having a child with club foot is 1 in 1,000. Okay, next slide please. Okay, so however, if they already have a child with club foot, their future children have a 3% chance of having the same abnormality. Parents who had club foot themselves have a 20 to 30 percent ch chance of having a child with club foot. So, as you can see in the picture, uh, on the right side we have the normal, um, normal uh, looking feet or foot. Okay. However, in the club foot, so that is facing us, uh, which is uh, facing in the, um, facing downward and inward. So it resembles a club. Okay. So next slide, please. Okay, so there is an example. That is an example of a club foot. Okay, so how can we assess um, congenital talipes equinovirus? So the earlier a true disorder is recognized, the better the correction will be. Make a habit, therefore, of straightening all newborn feet to the midline as part of the initial assessment to detect this disorder. If there is a possible questionable deformity, refer to the pediatric physician and orthopedist specialist to begin the process of evaluating the infant properly so here you can see how uh, the uh, the abnormality is being um, assessed on the picture okay next slide please so how can we diagnose the ev by using radiographs talocalcaneal parallelism is the radiographic feature of club feet the anteroposterior view is taken with the foot in 30% or uh, 30 degrees sorry of plantar flexion so that is within the top top left picture and the tube at 30 degrees from vertical so the, you uh, you can see that uh, within uh, the the top right picture the lateral view is taken with the thir with the foot in 30 degrees of plantar flexion that we uh, which you can see at the uh, bottom left picture okay next slide please so how can we treat uh, club foot or congenital talipes equinovirus so we have the Ponsetti method a non-invasive method which consists of a specific technique of manipulation of the club foot deformity uh, which is followed by the application of a plaster cast with the foot in the corrected position a percutaneous tenotomy of the Achilles tendon is done prior to the final cast to gain complete correction in most patients. Okay, or we, or we can opt to surgery in correcting this uh, deformity. The tight heel cord may respond well to stretching in casts. Many patients, uh, 80 to 90 percent, will require a surgical procedure called a percutaneous transverse Achilles lengthening or TAL, T-A-L. By lengthening the heel cord, the heel is able to drop down and align correctly for normal standing. After this procedure, the infant will be placed back into a cast for 2-3 to three weeks before transitioning into special shoes and a brace. Okay, next slide please. So, as nurses, we can protect skin integrity, monitor the site of impaired tissue integrity at least once daily for color changes, redness, swelling, warmth, pain, or other signs of infection can also monitor the patient's skin care practices or also provide um, gloves or clip the nails if necessary to avoid damaging the skin with scratches. can also promote acceptance of body image by acknowledging and accepting or accept an expression of feelings of frustration or neg any negative emotions from the patient or significant others. can also support verbalization of 
positive or negative feelings about the actual or perceived loss and also be realistic and positive during treatments in health teaching and setting goals within limitations. We can also provide health education which we, we should include the parents since they are mostly in contact with their children should include the parents in creating the teaching plan um, uh, also provide clear uh, thorough and understandable explanations and demonstrations and also render positive constructive reinforcement of learning okay next slide please for the nursing diagnosis we have disturbed body image related to permanent alteration in structure and or function okay So we have the hypospadias and epispadias. So hypospadias is a urethral defect in which the urethral opening is not at the end of the penis but on the ventral aspect of the penis. It is fairly common anomaly occurring in approximately 1 in 300 male newborns. It tends to be a familiar, familial or, or may occur from a multi-factor Multifactorial genetic focus. So, epispadias is a far more severe defect and results from a defect in the dorsal wall of the urethra. Resulting in a dorsally located ectopic meatus, the most extreme cases in males result in a pinopubic location of the meatus and complete incontinence. So, here is an example of the hypospadias and the epispadias. So for the assessment, so we have the, both are diagnosed mainly through physical examination. Upper urinary tract anomalies are rarely associated with hypospadias and do not justify routine Im imaging in these patients unless other organ system anomalies are present. Be certain to inspect all male newborns at birth for hypospadias or epispadias as part of a routine physical examination. The degree of hypospadias may be minimal or maximal. Many newborns with hypospadias have an accompanying short shorty, a, a fibrous band that causes the penis to curve downward. Also inspect carefully for cryptorchidism, which is often found in conjunction with hypospadias. So the treatment is for the hypospadias. Cospadius is generally impaired for functional and cosmetic reasons. Surgical repair is desirable between the ages of 6 to 18 months. So tubular rise in size play, uh, the, it, the tubular in size place repair has become the most commonly used repair for both distal and mid-shaft hypospadias. So we have the adjuvant hormonal therapy, although no corrective medical therapy for hypospadias is known, hormonal therapy has been used as an adjuvant to surgical therapy in infants, in infants with exceptionally small phallic size. So the nursing responsibilities, so relief from pain, encourage use of relaxation techniques, apply ice, compress as indicated, and educate Parents that medications will prevent pain and restlessness and allow for healing. Improve urinary elimination. Encourage high fluid intake after catheter removed. Offer favored choice of liquids early and instruct parents to notify the patient, the physician, and changes in the urinary pattern or inability to void. Lesson anxiety. Encourage verbalization of concerns and allow time for parents and child to ask questions about conditions, pr procedures, recovery. Answer questions calmly and honestly. Use pictures, drawings, and models for information and reassure parents and child that uh, defect or surgery will not compromise sexual activity and will not affect reproductive ability. So we have pre prevent infection, obtain urine specimen for culture and sensitivities as indicated, inform parents to avoid allowing the child to straddle toys, play in a sandbag, swim, or engage in rough activities until advised by the physician, and apply sterile technique during dressing changes, catheter care, or draining urine bag. So we have the nursing diagnosis, acute pain related to physical factors, damage to the skin or tissue. And here are references. And thank you for listening.